system program. This information session this evening is primarily for students, uh, their families and supporters who are in Canada and looking at exploring our undergraduate program. So this would be your first degree. Uh, we will not be covering grad studies this evening and we have limited information for international students. You're more than welcome to attend if you fall into one of those other categories, but be, please be aware of the session content this evening. We do have many great resources available for both our graduate study programs and uh, international students and other sessions available for students beyond a Canadian, um, a Canadian high school student. So before we get started, uh, you'll notice we have a few tech issues this evening. So please bear with us if things seem to be not working. Uh, just bear with us if we work with technology. You would think after being a couple of years into the pandemic and getting through that, we would be better at Zoom, but still things, uh, the Zoom gods don't always work in our favor some evenings. Uh, so before we begin, uh, Lakehead University respectfully acknowledges its campuses are located on the traditional lands of the Indigenous people. Lakehead Thunder Bay is located on the traditional lands of the uh, Fort William First Nation signatory to the Robeson Superior Treaty of 1850. Lakehead Aurelia is located on the traditional territory of the Anishinaabe. The Anishinaabe nations are collectively known as the Three Fire Confederacy. Lakehead University acknowledges the history of many nations hold in the areas around campus and is committed to a relationship with First Nations, Métis, and Inuit people based on principles of mutual respect, um, trust, and collaboration in the spirit of reconciliation. Now, before I begin, I did mention we're having a few tech issues this evening, so we do appreciate your patience as we go through that. And I just want to talk to a couple of housekeeping um, items as well. You will note that everybody other than our hosts and co-hosts this evening are muted and have their cameras off for the entire uh, portion of the webinar. This, however, does not mean that you cannot be engaged and um, a part of this webinar, the whole point of hosting these types of information sessions is for students to ask questions um, and engage with us. So please do this through the Q&A feature, which is located on the bottom navigational bar. Ultimately, you can use the chat feature, but I will let you know the Q&A does work best for us because we can answer the questions directly through this feature or we can answer them live as we work through this information session. Um, please note that the information that you do share through this webinar, so if you were to post a question in the Q&A or into the chat, it is viewed by all attendees of this webinar, so we do recommend not disclosing personal information. Um, and lastly, please be aware that this webinar is being recorded. Awesome. So just a couple of quick introductions uh, as we get going around the table this evening. First off, my name is uh, Tori. I'm going to be your host this evening. I work in the Office of uh, Student Recruitment and I have a colleague on the webinar with me this evening. I'm just going to turn it over to Jack. Hello, I'm Jack Hughes. I'm located at the Thunder Bay campus. I'm the inbound recruiter for the Thunder Bay campus and I will be your co-host today. Awesome. Thanks, Jack. And we're just going to go through um, some introductions from those of us um, that are supporting us from the program area this evening. So first, Lee. Hi, everybody. My name is Lee Potvin, and I'm an assistant professor and the director of Outdoor Recreation, Parks and Tourism. Uh, really happy to be here with you tonight and um looking forward to any questions that you might have and nice to see all the faces from folks on the call as well thank you lee and i believe julie is with us now this evening so i'll turn it over to julie thanks tori uh, my name is julie rosenthal i'm an assistant professor with the school of outdoor recreation parks and tourism i'm also the assistant director and i'm really looking forward to sharing some information about our program with you all Fantastic. And we have two amazing students on with us this evening that have a wealth of knowledge to share. So first up is um, Abby. Hi, my name is Abigail Beatty, and I'm a fourth year ORPT student, and I'm excited to participate in the webinar. Thanks, Abby. And last but not least, Sam. 
Hi, um, my name is Sam Rogowski. I'm in my fourth year of ORPT with Intermediate Senior Education. Um, and I'm also the current president of the Outdoor Recreation Student Society, which we'll be speaking on later in the seminar. Fantastic. And you'd notice we've already started talking in acronyms. <laughs> so ORPT is our Outdoor Recreation Parks and Tourism Program. So if you're a little confused what we're talking about, put it in the chat, put it in the Q&A. Uh, we tend to many times talk in words and technology that we're familiar with, but we sometimes forget um, that may not be a language that's always familiar to our audience as well. So ORPT is the short form of saying outdoor recreation, parks and tourism. Um, and so it's uh, just you'll probably hear that a little bit as we go through the webinar this evening. So before we get started, I just wanted to talk a little bit about Lakehead in general and, and things that you could look forward to as a future Thunder Wolf. And at Lakehead, the one thing I love about Lakehead is that we really encourage you as a student to pursue your passion, but also to step out of the crowd. And uh, this means so many different things to students. So it could be pursuing something that you're good at. It could be something that you're interested in. And I know this is something we're gonna really have a lot of chance to delve into even deeper in relation to the program this evening. Um, and the one thing that I really love, and, and um, I know we'll talk about this as well, is kind of the exceptional stories um, that come out of students' experiences. And this is our current students and also the students, the stories that our grads tell as well. And the nice thing with any experience and um, is that everybody's results and everybody's experience within those times are unique and different. And Lakehead really allows students that opportunity to grow and prosper and find what your story is. Now, Lakehead grad cites that it's our small class sizes. So 82% of our classes have less than um, 50 students contribute to their student success. Um, and that many times it's that inferential professor that knew them by name that really helped them on their journey. One thing we really pride ourselves in is that we connect our students to real world um, experiences. And this provides our students with a great opportunity to learn beyond the classroom. And this program is a great example of that out of the out of the you know, classroom type of experience that you get to have. And that could be drawn on local expertise within the community. That could be a workshop. Um, but really allows our students to gain not only practical experience, but um, relevant skills that will help you position yourself really well uh, within the future. Lakehead offers a unbeatable financial package. We're number one in Ontario and provide over $11 million annually to students, just like you to help you fund your education. And our programs prepare you for your future as well. So that hands-on experience, 100% of our programs have experiential learning and um, enhanced um, theory into their programs. Um, and students have been exposed to that at some point through their learning as well. And there's lots of different ways this looks. Um, you know, uh, the Outdoor Recreation Parks and Tourism Program is the program we're focusing on this evening. Um, and this could be, you know, not just within this program, but a number of the other programs that we offer right across our two campuses. The examples of experiential learning could be things like co-op, it could be practical or placements, internships, and, and working with uh, community partners. The one thing that's really unique as well is we really make use of the natural environment that our campuses are housed in. So step in right out of campus in Thunder Bay, right in our backyard, you're surrounded by this incredible beauty and the mystery of a natural laboratory. Um, and it's not unusual to see a class out, outside learning um, in many different and experiential, um, extraordinary ways. And so this is a great way that our students get to practice teamwork and leadership um, in that environment as well. So tonight we're gonna focus specifically on the Outdoor Recreation Parks and Tourism Program. And this program is connected to our Faculty of Social Sciences and Humanities. And uh, Lakehead University is Canada's number one small university for social sciences and humanities. The Outdoor Recreation Parks and Tourism Program, and don't worry guys, I'm not stealing any of your thunder here, is a one of its kind program in Canada. And uh, it offers a unique integrated theory and applied a learning opportunity to, to allow our students to really study outdoor recreation and, and leisure pursuits in those natural environments. 
So outdoor recreation is in is playing an increasingly an important role in our contemporary lifestyles. I, I think we've really lost in many ways a connection to our environment. And uh, we know how important that environment helps to contribute to health and fitness, to friendship, to personal reflection, um, enhancement of culture, um, appreciation of those natural environments, and also a key, a key element to economic development and environmental protection as well. So at this time, I'm gonna stop talking and uh, I'm gonna turn this over to the amazing faculty and students that we have here this evening to really showcase uh, um, this program. So I think we wanna show a video first. Is that what you like, Julie? Okay, so we're gonna see if this works um because we were having a few tech problems earlier this evening most about living in Thunder Bay is the amount of outdoor opportunities that we have. No matter where you turn, you have an opportunity to be outside and explore. Someone told me that uh, you should find something you love and then learn how to get paid for it. So this was the perfect opportunity to find that. Thanks, Tori. Um, so hi again, everybody out there. Um, I'm just going to say again, my name is Lee, my pronouns are she, her. And so yeah, as Tori said, super robust introduction to Lakehead in general, but really lays the foundation for um, outdoor recreation parks and tourism at Lakehead, which is uh, totally unique in Canada. There is no other program exactly like us in terms of what we offer in, uh, for the student experience as well as your academic achievements. So we are the longest running outdoor recreation program in Canada. We're going to celebrate our 45th anniversary this year. Um, and we've been training competent professional outdoor leaders you know, since that time. We're a bit different from other programs. Um, obviously, the outdoor component we'll talk more about, but we also offered several double degree options. So um, you can do a Bachelor of Education alongside your uh, Honours Bachelor Outdoor Recreation. We also have double degrees in Geography and Natural Science, Women's Studies, and we have a concentration in Nature-Based Therapeutic Rec, which you're going to hear a little bit about. So um, we also are super unique in the sense that our recreation opportunities focus on outdoor settings. Uh, so we're not a facility-based recreation um, program. And I see the program options slide is up and Julie's gonna talk a little bit more about those in, in a bit more detail and hope it didn't steal your thunder, Julie. <laughs> That's okay. We just go, get so excited about our double degree options. Exactly. Um, it's one of the things that our students tend to come towards our program for because it gives you a lot of flexibility in terms of trying to pair your interest in the outdoors with some of your interests in other subjects. So students are, are certainly welcome to take an honors Bachelor of Outdoor Recreation without a double degree um, and that gives students a lot of flexibility to explore courses in other areas um, while get, while gaining their outdoor um, recreation degree. Others choose to pair their honors outdoor recreation degree with a Bachelor of Arts and that gives two degrees in four years and that Bachelor of Arts could be paired with um, geography, history or gender and women's studies. Some students also have an interest in sort of conservation and the science end of things. So you can also do a double degree of outdoor recreation, parks and tourism, along with a Bachelor of Science in the natural sciences. And that's usually with biology, but you also get to take courses in geography, um, geology, anthropology and other sciences like that. 
Um, there's a lot of students who are really interested in becoming outdoor educators as a result of our program. And so there's an, also an option to um, do concurrent education. So that means you're taking an honors Bachelor of Outdoor Recreation degree and completing that while you're taking some of your education courses. And you have an immediate entry into the two-year education program. Um, and so that's an automatic, if you're into the con concurrent education program, you're immediately accepted into the two-year education program following the outdoor recreation degree. And so I would say about, about a th mm, about half of our students end up choosing the double uh, degree with concurrent education. And you can specialize either in the primary junior side of things, working in the elementary schools, or in inter intermediate senior if you wanted to be a high school teacher. Um, so those are some of our program options. And there's also one more that's a, a concentration in nature-based therapeutic recreation that Lee will tell you a little bit more about. Yeah, so this is another um, pretty popular program amongst the students that come into our program. It focuses in on ways to support people in um, making the outdoors more inclusive and accessible, as well as looking at the therapeutic benefits of spending time in the outdoors and the ways in which we can support people in doing that. So some of the courses that students take in the nature-based therapeutic recreation program focus in on um, psychology, there's uh, an anatomy and physiology focus, as well as some specialized courses within um, our own outdoor recreation programming that focus on uh, ways to engage with practices that sort of the best, the best practices, excuse me, uh, in therapeutic recreation. Oh, who's next? Oh, I can just keep talking. So, um, <clears throat> Thunder Bay, as you heard in the video, uh, and, and the Outdoor Recreation Parks and Tourism Program is situated at the Lake at Thunder Bay campus. It's only available at the Lake at Thunder Bay campus. And um, frankly, there's no better place uh, in the world to be able to access uh, outdoor recreation. It, it really speaks to the nature of this program uh, and the way that it is sort of baked into the history of Lakehead University that this program exists. And um, this place, the land around it, the water around it, um, you could spend your whole life exploring here and still have a lot of places that you had never been before. Um, I'm not sure you can see here someone's kayaking on Lake Superior in front of um, the peninsula, Sibley Peninsula, which has the land formation known as the Sleeping Giant on it. I don't know if anyone else wants to talk about the unbeatable location piece. I'll share a little bit. Um, so one of the things that drew me to Lakehead. I was a student in the outdoor recreation program about 20, over 20 years ago. I, drew, I grew up in Southern Ontario um, and I had never been to Thunder Bay before. And I just heard about this program and I thought, oh, okay, this sounds really interesting. Um, and I had no idea the kinds of incredible outdoor experiences that you could have in the Thunder Bay area. Um, so one of the things that I find that I love about this area is the cross-country skiing. There's just so much uh, available. Well, it's a lot of snow here. Um, and for, for me, that means I'm able to ski sometimes all already in October, all the way through to March. Um, and we have some incredible uh, internationally known uh, ski races that happen here. And uh, it's a really great place if you like winter sports. I'll pass it over to Abby to share her favorite part about Thunder Bay. Um, I think one of my favorite parts about Thunder Bay is that you are right in the city, but if you drive 15 minutes out, you're out of the city and there's so many conservation areas and different walking, tra hiking trails um, and activities that you can do and you don't have to go that far out of the school. And I'll pass it over to Sam. Um, for me, um, I'm personally um, one of the locals in the program. Um, I was born and raised in Thunder Bay. Um, and I think with um, being a part of outdoor recreation in Thunder Bay, it made me gain a new appreciation for the area. Um, I'm able to have a lot of access to different types of recreation very close to my front door. Um, and um, be able to do things that I haven't really had the chance to do um, with that, um, the access that outdoor recreation gives us. 
Okay, thanks, Seha. Um, and I'm going to be speaking a little bit about the first year experience, and that's really a time when our students get to know um, the area of Thunder Bay. Most of our students are not from Thunder Bay, so Sam is actually a little bit unusual in our program being a local student. Um, so it's really important for us to have it, uh, an opportunity for our students to connect with that area to really get to know the fact that there's cliffs for for climbing like rock climbing and ice climbing there are hundreds of lakes available for flat water canoeing there are incredible rivers available for whitewater canoeing and whitewater ca kayaking there's of course lake superior that's almost like an inland sea um, that gives incredible opportunities we have sailing we have sea kayaking on lake superior um, and so basically any kind of outdoor ex recreation activity that you'd like to do, there's an opportunity to do that in Thunder Bay. And so in first year, we have a number of courses that expose students to both the, the natural environment, the cultural environment around Thunder Bay, as well as the theories and practices that we would be using in upper years. So we're each going to be talking about one of the required courses that you would need to be taking in outdoor recreation in your first year. And we'll start with Lee, who will talk about land relations. Great. Thanks, Julie. I'm also have some kind of post viral cold. So if I start to cough, I might have to have someone else talk about a course for a moment. Um, but I'm going to talk to you about land relations, which is a course that you take in your fall term of your first year. And this course really orients you to uh, the land upon which Lakehead Thunder Bay campus and the city of Thunder Bay is situated, which is the traditional territory of Fort William First Nation. And um, typically this class is about understanding the landscape, understanding our relationship to it. And um, this fall, the instructor for this course um, had students do things like understand how to clean a fish, cook a fish over a fire, and then the students um, got to eat that food together outside. It turned out to be an unbelievably warm day in the fall. Um, we didn't people were in t-shirts and shorts, which was which was really phenomenal. Um, some other things they did, they went bird watching out at a local um, conservation area for some hikes. They just really, it really helps situate students in the place and on the land where we are. So I'm also a local um, and these things do cause me, as Sam said, to have a greater appreciation, but it also as a local person, you don't always realize the information and the knowledge that you hold. And I think that this course is a really great way to communicate, um, you know, what this place is all about and what the land is like here for these for incoming students and provides a really great opportunity for for students to connect with one another in that context. Okay, and then I will be um, speaking on Outdoor Skills and Theory 1, or we also like to call that OSAT 1. Um, coming into outdoor recreation parks and tourism, everyone is coming from different um, walks of life and different types of experience. Um, so the purpose of this class is to get everyone kind of on the same page. Um, you'll have your first opportunity in this class. Uh, it is in the fall semester of the first year. Uh, to do your first trips, you'll have the option to have a three day canoe trip um, on, I believe it's Onion Lake, um, or sorry, Dashwa Lake, uh, which is um, about an hour outside of town um, in Atacokan, which is between here and Manitoba. Um, or you'll have the option to do a three day hiking trip, um, which will be on the Sleeping Giant. Uh, so as a class, you'll be able to plan these trips, plan your food for the days and really get to know the other students in the class and work um, in a hands-on fashion, um, being able to uh, gain those skills. Super, thanks, Sam. Yeah, so those two courses that Lee and Sam were talking about are your first courses in the first term of first year, and they're really interactive. You're really working uh, with the other students, getting to know each other right away, um, and spending a lot of time in the field with one another. So those are really great ways of connecting in with some of the other students and getting a sense of not only the skills that, that you would require for the outdoors, but also the landscape and the culture around Thunder Bay. 
In the winter term, there are two other courses. One is called Foundations of Outdoor Recreation, and the other is Group Dynamics. So I'll speak a little bit about Foundations, and then Abby will talk about Group Dynamics. So Foundations is a course where we're really giving you the solid base of um, theoretical concepts that you're going to be building upon in some of the upper year classes. So uh, giving an understanding of how it is that recreation works, how it is that it contributes to all of these really wonderful positive outcomes in people's lives. Um, it also gives you some of those academic skills, so making sure that you know how to use the library, how the research um, expectations, how to write a paper, how to appropriately do citations, and doing that course in first year really sets you up to be successful academically in your upper year courses. And um, so we really try to do that, even though it's mainly taught indoors, we try to do that with a lot of experiences in the classroom as well. And I'll pass it over to Abby to talk about group dynamics. Yeah, so as Julie was saying, group dynamics is offered in the winter term. Um, and during the course, you'll learn about effective communication, leadership roles, how to work through conflict um, and working effectively as a team. Um, no matter what you do in your future career after you graduate out direct, chances are you're going to be working in groups. And so um, this also set, well, this sets you up for the future in your future career, but the course also sets you up in the program as you, as in the program, you work a lot in groups. Um, and many students and alumni speak very highly of this course. Savvy. Um, and now Sam, I think, is going to be talking about some of the highlights of second year. So we were just looking at some of the courses that you would be taking in first year. Those four courses are what you would take in outdoor recreation, but you'd also be taking other courses, um, such as an English course. And if you're taking a double degree, you might be taking required courses in those programs. Um, so we won't be having enough time to talk about all of the courses that you can take in our program, but we thought we'd bring up a couple highlights from each of the years. So Sam's got a, a, a couple highlights from second year to share with you. Yeah, um, so in your second year, um, I spoke about um, Outdoor Skills in Theory 1. This is where you'll be able to take Outdoor Skills in Theory 2. Um, this course is taken during the winter semester and during this course, you'll learn how to create a fire using flint and steel, go snowshoeing, cross-country skiing. Um, you'll have the opportunity to dog sled and ice climb as well. Um, you'll learn a lot about um, river travel and safety, and you will also be able to um, go on a winter three-day camping trip um, where you'll be able to build and sleep in a Quincy, uh, which is the photo on the right there um, that Abby and one of our other students is in. Um, it's a really eye-opening opportunity for a lot of students as they have not had the opportunity to do this ever before. Um, and those who had had the chance to really have that leadership ability to uh, pass that on to the other students. It is actually quite a collaborative course. Um, and yeah, it's definitely, um, yeah, one of the highlights for that. Thanks, Sam. Um, I'm going to be talking about the third and fourth year highlights. Um, so the highlights for students are the field exploration courses. During the winter semester in third year, students get to pl plan a 10 to 14 day expedition in a wilderness area. And then during the course, you will plan out your meals, the route that you'll take, equipment that you'll need, um, and also, also risk management strategies and risk management plans. Um, so some of the expeditions include certifications such as whitewater rescue, and the trip options change every year. But in the past, students got to go, got to choose from sailing or sea kayaking on Lake Superior, whitewater and flatwater canoeing in Wabakimi Provincial Park, or hiking in Pakistan National Park. Students get a credit for actually going on the expedition that they planned, and for many of the and for many of the students, it's one of their favorite highlights from the program.
Great. Thanks so much, Abby and Sam, for sharing some of the highlights of your second, third and fourth year classes. And one of the things that we, you know, we really try to highlight are those those times when you're out in on expedition and you're doing these hiking trips and things like that. And we don't want to give a false impression that you're outside all the time. We do try to be outside as much as we can. But we are also taking advantage of our indoor learning environments when uh, when necessary. Um, so we we do have courses where we're we're taking advantage of the local. Um, as Abby mentioned, there's a lot of uh, conservation areas and natural areas right in the city of Thunder Bay. And so when we can, we bring our classes out to those environments. Um, but sometimes we do have to teach in a lecture hall, but it's not where you're just sort of in a huge room full of people and you're just listening to a professor. What we really try and do is make our indoor learning really engaging and interactive. So most of the time you'll have a bit of a lecture from one of your professors who, that will basically be the starting point for an interactive kind of activity where you you'll be doing some hands-on learning and discussing with your classmates um, and that's one of the things that makes teaching in the school of outdoor recreation parks and tourism so so fulfilling it's very interactive um, and a lot of times we see our students as having knowledge that they contribute to the classroom where we're learning from one another not just a professor being the one who who expunges all of their in, uh, information towards everybody else we really acknowledge that everyone has something to contribute to the learning environment and we really try and foster that um, and our students you know we're really known to be quite um engaged in our classrooms and uh, I think that makes that makes it fun for everybody. Equipment. So you may be worried after listening to the expeditions that we go on throughout your four throughout the four years, you may be worried about equipment and what type of equipment that you would have to buy. Um, but you're in luck you actually don't have to buy any equipment the only things that we ask you to come to the program with are sunglasses whistle rain gear compass hiking boots and a day pack um, all other equipment used in the program can be attained at our equipment depot which is kind of like a library but instead of books you rent out equipment and gear um, so the equipment is free to use if it is if, if if it is a requirement of your course. Um, and then if you want to rent equipment for personal use, you can also do so by paying a small rental fee. And then we're gonna show you up next, um, a video that features one student who works at the depot and give you a behind the scenes of some of the equipment that the depot has to offer. Hi, my name is Colleen Hutchison. I'm a fourth year student in the ORPT program. I work at the Equipment Depot. The Equipment Depot is a gear lab for students to rent gear, ranging from water-based sports to winter activities. In various ORPT classes, you can borrow gear from the depot to help aid you in outdoor adventures or trips. Uh, that can range from sleeping pads to tents to cooking equipment to snowshoes. We have everything that you need. Sam. I know you're little now, but I hope you always remember to believe in magic. So I think the next thing is uh, related to Orsa, Sam, right? Yeah. You just um, let the video prophesize for you. Perfect. Amazing. <laughs> um, so, um, Something that is unique about our program on campus is that we have our own individual student society. Um, so we have the Outdoor Recreation Student Society, um, which is a group of eight students, kind of like a student council, um, who are elected each year by the ORPT student body. Um, so yeah, just like a student council. Um, 
just for the outdoor recreation program. And um, some alumni are also a part of this and really um, help out with this as well. Um, it's a great way to create community with the students and strengthen the bonds within the program. Uh, we put on social events, uh, publish a quarterly magazine that features student articles, and a lot of photography from students gets showcased as well. Um, and we also provide opportunities for students to gain different certifications. So this year we put on a mental health first aid, wilderness first uh, responder, and wilderness advanced first aid, as well as standard first aid, which is something that is required for your second year. Um, we are able to, through the student body, you will be paying, um, I believe every year, $45 as your outdoor recreation student society dues. Some of that goes towards putting on these different certifications and events and others uh, goes towards a grant uh, that we have called the Development Fund. Um, through the Development Fund, you're able to apply for up to, I believe, 50% of your, um, if you want to go to a conference um, with for something that you want to do with outdoor recreation or go on some type of trip, all that we ask you in return for that is a deliverable. So that can be a article that is written, um, we can receive photos or videos from that. Um, it really just helps you learn how to write grants and be able to have that access of money that you are putting into it every year. Thanks, Sam. I just want to add the development fund is really interesting to me as a faculty member because we have a lot of students who have a great sense of adventure and a keen interest in doing a variety of things. And, and so the development fund is a, an interesting way that students have decided to help other students to fund the adventures that they would like to go on, uh, whether that's a more academic adventure or a field-based adventure. And I think that that is a really beautiful segue into the sense of community that exists in ORPT and the way that uh, as faculty we are uh, and staff, we are here to support students um, I can say like Sam and I meet on a weekly basis about a variety of things. Sam's doing an honor thesis with me. And I know that Abby and Julie work together really closely as well and meet almost on a weekly basis. So these are folks that we know really well. We, uh, you know, first name basis, doors always open. And, and that's sort of the relationship that, that many of us have with the students. Uh, it certainly was not part of my undergraduate experience. I did not go to Lakehead for my undergrad. <laughs> Um, and so it's really nice as a faculty member, but then also to see the way that students want to support one another. Um, Development Fund's a great example, but also um, the Rec Buddies. Rec Buddies? Is that the right word? Rec Siblings. Siblings, thank you. So I knew that was wrong. Uh, rec Siblings is when the, um, the upper year students are assigned to uh, incoming students and uh, they're sort of paired to provide a mentorship for you and to provide you with the opportunity to have someone to talk to that has had those experiences and maybe someone you can talk to about, you know, social stuff or non-academic stuff that you might not come to a faculty member for. Maybe you want to find out where, you know, the best climbing is in Thunder Bay and, and you can ask your, your rec sibling, your rec buddy, your rec sibling that question. So, and I know I uh, started as a faculty member in this program in 2021, um, so not that long ago, and it was in the middle of a pandemic, and I started my job online, and really the faculty and staff in this program never skipped a beat to welcome me into this program, and so I can sort of speak firsthand uh, to what that felt like and to feel like you know, people were really invested in in whether I uh, showed, showed up to work and really wanted to to help make it a good experience for me. So that's sort of my my perspective on the sense of community. I'm not sure if anyone else wants to share. 
I'll jump in. Um, so I, as I mentioned, I was a student in the program decades ago, and I didn't really know anybody. Most of our students are from Southern Ontario. They don't come with a lot of their classmates from their high schools. And that was the case for me. I only knew one other person who was at Lakehead. And my first day at Lakehead, um, you know, I was walking by and there's some people playing ultimate Frisbee and they invited me to take part. And I didn't really even know they were talking to me. And I said, well, yeah, okay, I'll play. And there, I said, I, I'm not particularly good at uh, ultimate Frisbee. And they said, no, that's, that's fine. And I'm still friends with those people who invited me to play with them that first day on campus. Um, I've been to their weddings. I've seen them have their children. And, you know, it's been 20 years later that we're still some of the closest friends uh, that we could ever imagine having. Um, and that's that's really reinforced by some of the activities that you do in your very first semester because you're connecting with one another you're out in the field with one another and you can't help but learn with learn about one another while you're doing these things and they turn into lifelong friendships um, and even turn into not only friendships but also important um, career and networking opportunities where we call upon each other in professional capacities as well and i'll, I'll let either abby or sam chime in now I can go. Um, I think for sense of community to me is for what like so after first year a lot of your like the cohorts I guess are usually all mixed up so in second year you get to you know basically everyone that's in the program because it's so small um, and so I think that's definitely a big part of the sense of community is just being able to like walk down the hall and see familiar faces and know people and have conversations with them and it makes you feel included into the program and I'll pass it over to Sam um I don't necessarily want to speak on Abby as well but uh the two of us have had a um very interesting experience within the program where the pandemic happened at the end of our first year and all of our second year uh with that a lot of the classes within the program um were not being run throughout that year so all of the cohorts like Abby said kind of got intermingled and intertwined um there is that um sense of community in the case that you know a lot of people within the program and by first name um, a lot of the classes do happen in the one hallway um, which we call the rec hall um, even just walking up and down that hallway any time of day you'll run into people that you know um, or have had classes with um, as well within the program there is a lot of opportunity um, for the first and fourth year students to get to know each other through a lot of the fourth year classes helping out with the um, with the first and second year classes and being able to get, get to know them that way. Um, so really just having um, that sense of com community as Lakehead is a small university as well. The classes are within the program no more than 50 students, I think was the largest that I had. Um, you really get to know the instructors and the other students on a um, first name basis. Great. Thanks so much, um, Sam. And it's it's sort of an extension, I guess, of this sense of community. We have the, the community within outdoor recreation, parks and tourism. It seems like a, a really close knit family while we're in our classes and studying together. But as I said, you know, that actually continues on after uh, people complete the program where people still really have a, a sense of pride of being an outdoor wrecker. We call ourselves wreckers. Um, it's an outdoor recreation graduate. And uh, I think because we understand what we've all learned through the program and that we end up being trained as really highly qualified outdoor practitioners, there's a lot of employers who come to us seeking students to work for them. Um, so getting summer jobs is one of those things that um, is, is so easy. There's such a high demand these days for um, people to be working in the outdoor recreation, parks and tourism field. I think one of the things of, about the pandemic is that people realize how important the natural environments close to home are to us for 
mental health, for our physical health, um, and just, just for appreciating nature. So we often get employers who come to us directly looking for students to uh, work for them for summer jobs. And those often then turn into permanent positions upon graduation. And so we have students um, who've graduated and gone into a wide different range, like a huge range of different outdoor careers. Um, if you have an interest in the outdoors, starting off in our program is a really great way to explore the various opportunities. And so it could be that you have an interest in being a recreation therapist. It may be that you end up working in summer camps. You could be involved in municipal parks and recreation um, service provisions. A lot of our students end up becoming teachers, either in the formal classroom or in sort of alternative education programs. Many work with parks, um, with Ontario parks, with parks. Parks Canada as park interpreters or as gate attendants initially. Some end up being um, very high up level uh, managers in the park system. And many end up um, being involved in tourism, either as advisors in the tourism industry. Many have um, opened up their own businesses. And so featured in this photograph here is Paul Amano, who graduated the same year as me. And he started a dog sled uh, business. Um, and he's one of the people who actually teaches our students um, dog sledding when, when they have an opportunity to do that in their second year outdoor skills and theory class. So there's so many directions that you can go to in terms of careers with the outdoors. And as long as you have an interest in the outdoors, those opportunities will come your way through your time at the program. Awesome. Thanks so much. I think we're just gonna pause for a second and just see if there's any questions. Um, from those that are attending. We have a pretty quiet group on online with us this evening. So if you do have any questions specifically around um, the program, I get one that I get asked quite a bit. So I'm gonna throw this outside uh, out there for you guys to answer. So uh, a lot of times when we're talking to students, we have students that come from such a variety of backgrounds and a variety of experiences. Um, and sometimes students are hesitant about this program that it they will not fit in based on you know, they've they've hiked in the GTA and they know they're passionate about the outdoors, but they just haven't had the same type of wilderness experiences or canoeing. So what do you say to students about that on how they would be able to fit and grow within this program? So I'm going to jump right on that one. Um, you don't need any uh, previous experience to be uh, in this program. There are no uh, technical skill tests or anything before you start the program. It's, you know, all the requirements to, to enter into the course are academic. As Sam said, we want students to have their uh, first aid, their standard first aid by their second semester of second year. So winter term of second year. And that is because they are, students are taking the outdoor skills and theory two course, which does involve that three day uh, camping trip. And, um, so yeah, there, there we are welcome anyone uh, who has a passion and an interest and also really want to emphasize that there really are three elements to our program, which is outdoor recreation, parks, and tourism, and all of the configurations um, of those uh, disciplines. So we have a really wide variety of disciplines, wide variety of interests. I think the common thread amongst our students is that they are uh, curious and excited. They often like to learn um, kinesthetically or they, you know, they like to learn by doing. Uh, frequently our students say they don't love sitting in a desk. They like to move around. They learn best when they're moving. And I think if that's the kind of learner that a person is, then then our program is very well suited uh, to them. Awesome. Thank you, so everyone. Much. <laughs> That's awesome. So I'm just going to do a little bit of additional information and hopefully that uh, triggers a few other questions that uh, come in as well that we can move back to. So just a couple of things to think about with those that are attending the webinar uh, this evening. I have up on the screen right now some important dates. And so if you are a direct from high school student, just a quick reminder that January 12th is the deadline. Uh, to apply for current high school students if you're wanting to be considered in the first round of applications. So for sure, this is a deadline you don't want to miss, but our program doesn't close after this deadline. So, um, you know, maybe you're looking at different things or you're not ready to apply yet. You don't have to worry, but we do recommend that that January 12th deadline. 
There's also a bunch of information up on the screen around scholarships, bursaries, awards, admissions offers. We are running a whole series of additional webinars. Um, they start next month in April. And they, sorry, in April. April is not next month. <laughs> they start next month in February and uh, run all the way into June. And it's called our Getting Ready for Lakehead webinar series. And this will connect you with a whole a bunch of other things around getting to know Thunder Bay, understanding, you know, getting ready for re residence, um, financial aid. So you can check out some more information. And maybe if Jack has a moment, he can post uh, the link to where you can find those on our website as well. So great ways to further connect with us as you go through the um, exploratory process and application process and stuff as well. Now, I, Tori, I, I Tori yeah. there's just a couple of questions on the Q and A. Yeah. Um, if you don't mind, I'm going to just jump in and I was trying to type my answer, but my brain no, is hundred percent. Yeah, no, for sure. I was going <laughs> to, yeah, we can do that for sure. Okay. Thanks. So, uh, first Nicholas's question, I know you directed it at Sam, but I'm going to jump on it unless you really want to Sam. Um, and so the question is around, uh, the double degree of HBOR and the, um, bachelor of education. And then in the course calendar, it says that you need one half FCE elective in your first year. So that's in sort of, uh, an internal way that we talk about courses and about credits, um, at Lakehead and every university has a different way of talking about credits, but a half FCE is a semester long course where you're in the classroom typically for three hours. Uh, a week so a sort of a one 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 course uh and you would take five in a term so your one half half ce elective could be um in that case i'm just making sure it would be sort of anything like it could be an art it could be music it could be history it could be anything you're interested in electives are designed for you to uh, explore and learn about different subjects outside of our discipline uh, we don't offer electives at the first and second year in ORPT or first year. We only offer required courses, but you get more and more ORPT electives at the third and fourth year. And you can always fill your open electives with or with outdoor rec classes if you would like. Um, so if that didn't make sense, Nicholas, you just let me know. Um, the second question is about accessibility and specifically uh, accessibility for students who uh, may be on the autism spectrum. And we have a diverse community of learners at Lakehead and within outdoor recreation. And we're super happy to work with folks, um, you know, and, and however you learn and whatever learning supports required, we have a student accessibility services program on campus and they will help guide you and um, support you in your learning and provide you uh, with the support uh, that you may need if there's any learning accommodations that are required and then they will work with your uh, course instructors to make sure that uh, we have all the necessary supports in the classroom and uh, in experiential learning context so I hope that is a helpful answer as well I do want to say that I know there's going to be contact information for Lakehead and recruitment in general but um, you're very welcome to reach out to me anytime by email um, if you have any other questions or want to want to connect Awesome. Thanks so much. And yeah, we appreciate the conversation and the engagement. So if there is additional questions or that has spurred other questions, please continue to post them in the q and I'll see if Jack can also um, grab the information on our accessibility uh, support services. We are having a webinar as part of our Getting Ready to for Lakehead webinar series that does focus on service um, student supports. And we have an incredible community at Lakehead that really wants students to be successful. And that's everything from accessing health and wellness services, mental health support services, um, uh, accessibility services for, um, for sh students with short-term, long-term visible and invisible uh, disabilities as well, um, access in mental health services. So we, we really support students to be successful in every way possible. And I think that's one of the things that makes Lakehead so unique is, is that small class sizes and the engagement that you have with students and your professors as well, that, you know, you're, as, it, as uh, Julie and everyone else has mentioned as well, you're not just a number in the classroom. Uh, they know more about you than just you know, like a name on an attendance sheet. So um, it really leads to a lot of student success. 
We have the Student Accessibility Office has a great booklet for prospective students on kind of how to get in, engage with them, how to register for services and the steps for uh, getting things in place. And it's something we do recommend for prospective students to actually start that conversation in May, June of the year before you, um, the year you're starting. So everything's in place for you in September when you start, whether you think you're gonna access those support services or not. So um, if Jack can't find that for you, I will, and I'll, I'll get it into the, into the chat as well. So one thing we really do love is that opportunity for you to come and have a campus tour. And, you know, we only had to shut down our campus tour program for a really short period of time uh, during the pandemic. And we've been, I think it was 2021 uh, that we started back up with our campus tours. And we love welcoming guests and students to our campuses. And it's a great way for you to step a, a step on campus and actually see for yourself what it's like to be a Lakehead uh, student and, and to experience Thunder Bay for yourself. So we do really encourage you to come up for a campus tour. We do offer campus tours Monday through Friday um, on a daily basis out of the Thunder Bay campus year round. Um, and there is a campus tour bursary available for students. So if you are traveling more than 150 kilometers from home for a campus tour, you can access our campus tour bursary application. And we do have other ways for you to come and attend a visit or visit campus. So we don't have the information up on our website yet, but we will be hosting a three-day March break event again this year. So we're really excited to offer this. Um, and we will have some more information. We do try to have some days focused on specific areas. So there will probably be one day out of those three that um, outdoor recreation, parks and tourism will have some specific uh, opportunities for you to engage with faculty and students and learn a little bit more about the program area. So if you can come up on one of those days, it's, it's a great way. Uh, so more information on our March break open house will follow and it will be taking place on March 13th to 15th. Um, at both of our campuses, but if you're exploring outdoor recreation, parks and tourism, that's a Thunder Bay based program. We also uh, don't want today to be the last time for you to connect with us. And this is just the beginning of our conversations. As Leah's mentioned, um, all of us are open to continue to engage with you and connect with you as well. And um, I do have some information on our social media channels up there. So I know um, the Outdoor Recreation, Parks and Tourism program do a phenomenal job of also promoting their own program through social medias. And it's a great way to follow us on social media and see what it's truly like to be a Lakehead Thunder Wolf. And so I do encourage you to check us out online or maybe take a virtual campus tour as well. So I'm just gonna pause for a second just to see if there's any other questions. Anything that anyone would like to add into the conversation at this time? Awesome. Well, I'm just going to put the recruit email into the chat box. So this is the main way that you can contact us. And if you have a question today that uh, you didn't feel you wanted to ask at this moment, or maybe it comes to you in the, the middle of the night, um, you can continue that uh, conversation with us as well. Um, if we're not the individual that can answer that question for you, we'll be able to pass it on to Lee or Julie. Um, to find those answers for you. So we did just have another question come through um, and it was around the breakdown of local students to out of the area students. Does someone want to comment on this for us? Sure, yeah. Do Julie, do you want to go for it? You go ahead, Lee. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, so it's interesting to us that uh, we tend to draw more students from outside the area than from um, than from the region. Now, if you look at the population of Ontario, there's also more people in southern Ontario than there are in northern Ontario. Um, but uh, yeah, we tend to see. Oh gosh, if I had pers I don't know if I want to give percentages. That would be risky. But I'm going to say 10 to 15 percent of people come from uh, northern Ontario. Um, and Northwestern Ontario uh, within our program. So there are definitely folks from the region. Um, I know we've got some students from Thunder Bay and North Bay, Fort Francis, uh, Marathon, and a few other Northern communities. So um, certainly there are Northern folks here. I am from, born and raised from Thunder Bay as well. And so um, can certainly you know speak to <laughs> what it's like to be at Lakehead and be in Thunder Bay. 
but um yeah I think that that's is that that's probably a reasonable estimate hey Julie 10 to 15 percent it depends on the year um yeah. but yeah and I noticed Nick that that you are somebody who came to us um during the grade 12 day so I recognize that you are local so that's something that um it's kind of nice that we have students who are locals and we're really uh end up kind of being the hosts to the students who are coming from away. One of the things that that is quite a, uh, I guess, a trend is that a lot of the students from away want to stay in Thunder Bay when they're done. And so a lot of them are, are seeking jobs or creating opportunities for themselves as entrepreneurs um, in the Thunder Bay area because they really fall in love with that area. And I can speak to that uh, having come from Southern Ontario. Uh, I've lived in Thunder Bay now longer than I have lived anywhere else. And um, I would like to consider myself a local, um, though I still have aspects of being from away. Um, but yeah, no, it is a really nice mix. And I think that that's where um, people coming from all around really create this new environment um, in our program that that everyone really cherishes. And even if they end up away from Thunder Bay, after all, it's almost like their second home. A lot of people from away come back through and, and visit on their way from one place to another across Canada. I'm going to put Abby and uh, Sam on the spot. Uh, sorry, guys, I didn't tell you I was going to do this. But I, just in closing, um, you know, you're near the end of your program now. And can you offer a little bit of advice uh, to students that are maybe exploring outdoor recreation, parks and tourism, or something you wish you knew, or, you know, just something to the students that are on the webinar this evening, um, as you're about to finish out your program. So, Abby, did you want to go first? Sure. Um, my advice is to, for students coming into the program or wanting to come into the program, is to make yourself available and come into the program with an open mind um, and so that you can learn new skills and gain experiences that you've never done before. Um, and definitely step out of your comfort zone. I did for some things and I don't regret it at all. It was pretty awesome. Um, and then another thing is if you're interested in um, international schooling. We have an international placement, which I didn't know about until this year. <laughs> um, but if you are interested, we do offer that. And I think that'd be pretty awesome to do. So yeah, I think that's it. I'll pass it to Sam. Yeah, for me, I think um, one of the biggest things is don't be afraid to try something new. Um, you probably won't be the only person in that group that will be trying something for the first time. And there is an immense amount of support that comes from um, students with more experience or um, any of the instructors. Um, so really, like Abby said, coming out of your comfort zone has such rewarding outcomes. I know that there are a lot of students that tried ice climbing for the first time in their second year and now go out of their way to do it every single summer uh, or sorry, every winter. Um, and yeah, really just yeah, going out of your comfort zone in your first year, if you have canoed a lot, try the hiking three-day trip, or if you've hiked and never canoed before, try the canoeing trip. It really allows you to expand your experiences within recreation. Awesome. Thank you to your both. That was actually a great segue into my closing comments as well. So, you know, at Lakehead, we really do invite you to open your world to an exceptional education offered in unconventional ways. And that really is the Lakehead experience and, and uh, the outdoor recreation, parks and tourism program as well. So we really uh, look forward for to you joining us as you take that next step on your next big adventure. We really hope that it will be at Lakehead within this program. Really want to thank you for taking your time to join us this evening, and we look forward uh, to connecting with you again at a future date. So thanks so much, everyone, for taking the time to hang out with us this evening. If there are any other questions, please don't hesitate to follow up with us. We will be doing some outreach to everyone who attended the webinar this evening as well. Awesome. So thanks so much. Have a great rest of your evening.